Hello, this is a look at the Arctic sea ice. Uh, it's July 14th, 2019, and uh, we're getting into the latter half of the melt season in the Arctic. And uh, I thought I'd look at just one particular interesting area, uh, namely this area right here around 80 north and um, I think about 150 west this area right about here. Uh, I've pulled up a worldview comparison to look at this in a little more detail. This is an area that will need to melt out completely in this year, 2019, if 2019's sea ice is going to challenge the year 2012 for record low sea ice area and extent. So this is a pretty good bellwether, I think, for whether um, 2019 can keep up with the melt we saw in 2012. And of course, 2012 was aided with the, um, the Great Arctic Cyclone, which did a number on this area, as you will see as we go through this. And I like to use worldview because uh, to make this comparison, because not all sea ice extent or even sea ice concentration is created equal. <laughs> um, you know, 90% can look, you know, can mean a lot of different things. Is it is it ninety percent coverage with a mostly solid pack, with coarse rubble, with fine rubble, with uh, you know, um, just silky strands of ice that are about to melt any day? You know, ninety percent coverage can look very different and mean very different things. But you can oftentimes with the human eye pick out. Um, you know, at what stage the ice pack is at in its melting. Um, so we're going to zoom in here. And it's uh, about where we want it. So to start off with, I've got on the left the year 2012. Uh, this is July 15th. So actually, about where we are in 2019. And here on the right, I've got 2019, actually um, July 3rd, so almost two weeks previous. All right, I'm starting with these two dates because I think they both kind of show uh, an ice pack that I would kind of call um, perforated sheet. <laughs> um, you know, the, the most solid ice pack would be sort of unblemished sheet. And you see this in the central pack, you know, in March, April. Uh, next worst would be what I would call, you know, cracked sheet where you get long brittle cracks uh, running through it where that means the ice is thin enough to be cracked with, um, you know, some wind and wave action, but where the ice is still thick enough such that the cracks can only be made in a sort of brittle fashion. Uh, but when you get to this sort of perforated sheet where the cracks are, are smaller, that actually suggests that the ice is already um, thinner still. And really the next stage to look for is what I would call coarse rubble, where the leads kind of grow into... And here you can see 2019 already by June or July 3rd is getting close to that coarse rubble stage, as we'll see. And if we just... Um, go forward a little bit. Let's catch 2019 up with 2012. Yeah, we're definitely at the coarse rubble stage. If we look at this right here. So this is almost the same date, 2012 to 2019. 2012 on the left, 2019 on the right. And 2019 is definitely at this um, coarse rubble stage here. 2012, not nearly. 2012 still had a ways to go. Let's let's switch over to 2012 and see how far we have to go before we get to that coarse rubble stage. A lot of cloudy days. Okay, here we are. I think this is pretty... Safe to say this is kind of a coarse rubble stage. So, you know, here we see that our year, current year 2019, is still about 12 days ahead, almost two weeks ahead. 
uh, the melt of 2012 in this region, this important region, which is getting into the central Arctic basin, um, one of the areas that will need to melt out if 2019 is going to challenge 2012 for the new record minimum. Now let's go forward a little more with 2012, see what happens. We still got coarse rubble, still got coarse rubble, coarse rubble, 29th, still coarse rubble. We're starting to see leads open up a little more, rubble's becoming a little finer. And then we get some cloudy days. And right around here is when the great Arctic cyclone hits. All right, so let's look at the last decent day we see is right around here where we're kind of getting some fine rubble. It's kind of hard to tell, but we're getting some decent leads, but it's still pretty extensive coverage. You know, if we compare July 30th with, you know, there's maybe slightly larger leads, but it's not actually all that different from what we see, um, you know, July 12th of this year. Okay, let's go forward a little bit. The Great Arctic Cyclone hits in early August. And you already kind of get hints that some open water is really opening up. But it really becomes obvious here, August 6th. And I think we see a, a change to a completely different ice pattern here. Even though there's still decent coverage, you see it's not really chunks of rubble anymore, even fine rubble. It's what I would call uh, transitioning to the silky uh, strand, the thick silky strand uh, stage of, of ice melt. And uh, as we go through here, bam. And you still got some thick silky strands, but you're also getting some thin silky strands here. And by the time it gets to this, you really, you know, if this happens any time in August, um, especially like the first half of August, you can kiss this ice goodbye. It's, you know, these thin strands. So, you know, so if you look at the change that happened from like July 31st, kind of thick rubble, maybe some thin rubble. You can kind of tell something's going on, but here it's really obvious. Bam, you've got those silky strands. It's not even rubble anymore. All right, so in the matter of a week, it went from the the rubble stage to the, the silky strand stage, thanks to that great Arctic cyclone. And then from here, it's just these strands are just going to disintegrate over the next couple weeks they have no chance at this point see here it's very thin strands almost getting to the point of um, where the the ocean is more continuous has more continuous coverage than the um, you know there's just isolated little there's some very thin silky strands here and there but it's That's cloud cover right here. But uh, the next clear day, if we get a chance. Okay, early September. There's the faintest wisp of sea ice here or there. But really, by this point, I don't even think the um, satellites would pick up on this as sea ice area or extent. Um, you know, all these little tiny strands. So that's a reminder of what happened back in 2012. But what I think is interesting is how quickly the ice went from coarse rubble, which is not that you know different from actually what we see already in 2019. And a week later we had those you know, silky strands that were on the verge of, of melting, you know, so keep in mind this over here on the left is 2012, July 30th. This is 2019, July 12th. Okay, that's 
you know, so what I'm suggesting here is given the right conditions, this could all become silky strands in the matter of a week or two, you know, before the end of July, this could be, you know, deep in the central Arctic basin, we could be getting that sort of thing if it's already got this sort of rubbly, coarse rubble texture. And that goes for anywhere you see that, really. You know, right here. Um, you know, the only part that's really immune to melt completely, even given the worst conditions, I would say, is anywhere where you still see pretty much, um, you know, an unbroken sheet. Like, so maybe from here on inwards, I'd say this is pretty safe. Um, but... If the only ice left is a little bit, you know, north of 80 degrees north, 2019 could still make a run for the record. If you really want to see something completely absurd is to look at this area. This is just collapsing. It's really disintegrating compared with we go back to a similar day in 2012. Yeah. This ice looks so much worse. So, I thought that was interesting. Uh, I think it shows that ice is very vulnerable in 2019 and, uh, you know, it could easily still surprise us and be in the running for a record minimum. That's my opinion. Uh, we'll see how it plays out.